So please continue with the discussion on the policy. Prior to closing the forum, we'll have a brief space so that the people from the community can make comments or questions or information related to the policy forum or also to discussions we have had previously. Therefore, we will open the microphones. If you wish to take the floor, please go up to the microphones. And let me also remind you that we have three microphones in the room, which and also in the Zoom, you can include your questions in the Q&A box. And we will be checking the time for each person who takes the floor. Wesley, you have the floor. Wesley Correa from Telecom ISP Solutions. First of all, I would like to thank the moderators for their job. This is quite an intensive job, measuring the temperature, monitoring lists, and understanding what the community wishes. But what I want to express now to those who are in the room and those who are for the first time here and those who are following us remotely, we invite you to participate in discussions. This is quite a common problem. We have a very good proposal submitted by Georgie regarding temporary transfers or rather figuring out a solution to IP leases that occur. Some have not been documented. We are aware that an ISP might have a given block and they are leasing their block to someone else. So ultimately, we don't know who is using that block. So documenting this is very important, we cannot, but we cannot do this without the participation of the community. So everyone who can, we urge you to participate in the discussion. And if you cannot participate, we encourage you to read the discussions and the list, because the policies ruling the use of number resources in Latin America and the Caribbean are defined by the community. These are not defined by LACNIC. They're not defined by any specific individual. This has been defined by the communities who I urge you to participate. Thank you, Wesley, Jordi. Recently, we reached consensus and the two proposals have been ratified. One of these proposals authorizes the options to the authors to withdraw proposals because these proposals had two or three further points. I don't quite recall which these were. So the other proposal submitted by Thomas basically stated that proposals that are not withdrawn by the authors after 12 months elapse are considered abandoned. It's important to distinguish what withdraw is and abandon is because maybe once the proposal is submitted, abandoning is one thing, but withdrawing the proposal is done on a voluntary basis because you realize that the community doesn't wish to have that proposal. We have to distinguish that. It has occurred that when the proposals affect the policies, and in Tomás's proposal, the impact analysis clearly showed this, and this is what the consensus shows, that it could not be applied retroactively. So I refer to this today, and Thomas confirmed this. What was pointless is that you cannot apply this in a retroactive way. So the previous proposals were eliminated, but because these two proposals were implemented in the policy system, they couldn't be removed. In fact, the moderators sent an e email to the list, which I only read yesterday, and this email was a separate note stating, now we have assessed consensus and it is ratified. But we didn't have the option of withdrawing this because that proposal hadn't yet been approved. But this affects the process because we cannot eva evaluate the consensus after the final comments and contradict what was said during the entire discussion, particularly during the impact analysis. In other words, if it has been determined that this should be retroactive. The implementation of the proposal should be retroactive. This suggests that, in fact, this has to 
mentioned and maybe give rise to another version. So what I would ask is that if that email that was sent to ratify this and to give this a couple of weeks to the authors who so that they, instead of considering these as abandoned, should consider these as withdrawn. This is important because otherwise we might be approving a proposal stating that to have an ASM, at least you have to have three links with three different ISPs, and we offer a 12-month period to accept this. He corrects himself to confirm those three links, and during the entire discussion, nothing is said about applying this retroactively. So when the consensus is occurs, this would be applied retroactively. So this goes against the discussion we have had during the entire PGP. So we have to ratify this. We have to correct that. Sorry. Gracias por tu comentario. Thank you for your comment, Jordi. Laura. I'm Laura Kaplan from LACNIC staff. I wanted to refer to what Jordi has just referred to, particularly because beyond what was said during the impact analysis initially, during the Panama Policy Forum, there were several expressions from the community regarding that policy proposal, which at no moment states whether this is applied retroactively or forward uh, for the future. The normal thing would be to apply that policy as it was. Now, as moderators, we were consulted, and the moderators sent a letter following the second consensus regarding the interpretation of that proposal, and it will follow the wishes of the community in the sense that it will be applied retroactively. This is ratified by the board and the staff in agreement with the moderators and in agreement with the community as per the discussions in Panama will apply this in that way. Something else is that the proposal mentioned by Georgi were not implemented simultaneously. First, we had the abandoned proposal, and then we had another proposal. This is just to be clear as to the timeline of this process and why we ended up implementing the proposal at that time. Thank you, Laura. Go ahead, uh, Franco. With uh, we have Fernando Frediani who wants to uh, um, ask uh, via Zoom. Yes, go ahead. Dear friends, my special greetings to the chairs who are working so hard for the community. I would like to send my greetings to all the participants of the Public Policy Forum, but also to the community in general, to face uh, the problem of the scarcity of uh, IPv4. Many people are giving ideas of uh, how to solve, in quotation, Marks uh, how to or how to solve this problem, but actually my comment has to do with the fact that there is not much to do. It's a situation that is already consolidated, and there are not many solutions. But there are some small palliative uh, aspects that we can use, such as the transfers, the waiting list. I think that many people are suffering a lot with that because there is an expectation that uh, they will receive an address, but actually there are not enough addresses to replace in this uh, for replenishment, so there are not many solutions. So I would like to leave you with this message who the authors, especially those that have presented proposals in that regard, so that they're trying to make more IP4 addresses to appear, and that won't happen. I think that the work of the community should focus on other 
fronts, of course, they are not less important than the implementation of IPv6, but it could also be a better use of the existing IPv4 addresses that have already been assigned to many ISPs so that we won't depend on needing more IPv4 addresses. So my key comment has to do with the fact that there are not many solutions for this. There's not much we can do, and I don't know whether it's so good to continue to create public policy proposals because you won't be able to do this because they don't exist. So we have to be very careful in this phase where we see us, that people are desperate about finding addresses. We should not create new rules that may end up being a negative for the region. Thank you. Thank you for your comment, Edmundo. Go ahead, Oscar. Yes, very quickly. Just a very positive comment. This morning, they presented a proposal by uh, LAC, uh, GX, uh, of, uh, the, the, the uh, working group uh, with uh, Hernan. The, the working group uh, presented many comments of how they had uh, gone through the process and the positive comments uh, for, with that proposal. And I'd like to highlight that, that this was a different but a very positive process. The working group, Hernan, had already consulted this in the list, uh, asking about the problem. He received comments, and only then did he come with a mature proposal. So they went through a very fluent and uh, very calm uh, process, and I wanted to highlight that. It's quite an interesting and novel way of working, and uh, he they were praised for the way they did it. So my congratulations. I think that this is uh, a framework that could be uh, repeated in the future. Now, Oscar, yes, Oscar Robles of LACNIC. Uh, I precisely wanted to, to uh, say that I don't remember when a proposal had not received any um, comments against. I mean, well, it's not voting, but I don't remember what the previous time was. But I think that there were very positive uh, comments about the relevance of the proposal and, second, about the contents and the way it's approached. It's been very efficient which is not the case of other processes where we see five, six versions, and that uh, takes too much time of the community. The proposal evolves to, uh, it's too sluggish when we don't do that initial approach with those questions that could trigger things and uh, solve things, uh, solve the problems much faster, the, the idea, whatever we are trying to uh, define. So if you, you remember, a couple of years ago, there were a couple of proposals where precisely they tried to define or redefine the process so that this instance would not be just optional, but th that it should be mandatory, that should be necessary for any proposal. Until we have it, I think that we'll continue to have those proposals that get close to uh, the solution uh, as in a coil and uh, leading to loss of resources. On the other, but if people are interested in making it more effective, well, we can follow the example of LAC IX and Hernan and Ricardo and Edwin did a m wonderful job. They saved the resources of the community and they're much more efficient solving problems of the community. Thank you, Oscar. Now, Jordi will wrap up. Yes, very quickly, let me comment about what Laura said. Precisely, the problem is that when a proposal sometimes indirectly, like it or not, depends on another, and you reach consensus, but it's implemented in another order, then we break that balance. So maybe that suggests that when that can happen, you don't have to implement the proposals uh, in the order contrary to where the consensus was reached. But what is absolutely clear here is that regardless what was said at the discussion in Panama, there was a misunderstanding in my view, both the, to what Tomas and I were saying, that is, the, the, the proposals that uh, were about to be abandoned, well, 
could be applied retroactively, but af once they were being implemented and not uh, uh, going backwards. So Master, as the author, may confirm it, but that was the spirit that I was interpreting, and I supported that proposal, thinking that that was the case. Obviously, if during the discussion you change what you're going to approve, well, we are no longer be approving what we had been discussing. Hernan? What I'd like to say, as an example of what Patara and Oscar said, is this formalization of how we should uh, present the proposals from now on. This working group that read uh, the fact that uh, they reach a consensus. So, so when the proposal is uh, presented, there is a certain consensus, and it's presented to the community. In my view, this is a huge step forward. Not when uh, a proposal is brought here; it's not ripe, and it takes a lot of uh, discussion. So, if I'd like to change, is that when somebody uh, sends a proposal, then a working group should uh, uh, discuss it before it's brought to the forum and not uh, to bring it uh, when it is not ripe yet. That's my proposal. And the second thing, and this is a comment that has to do with what Wesley said, participation in the forum. If I show you the website of laknaker.net, no icons give you uh, direct access to the policy forum, and we devote almost one week during the events. And it's and here in the website, it's difficult to reach it. You you have to go to participate and then a link uh, forum. And, uh, this is a constructive criticism. If you could put just a single icon leading you to the forum so that the community can go there directly, that would be a significant step forward. Thank you, Hernan. Tomas, yes, going back to the discussion of uh, the proposed, uh, proposal that I presented and it was ratified. Jordi, I understand your point. However, the fact that you need to debate and see how processes or, oh, no, I don't think so. We have two parts in the processes and the manuals. One is the process itself. Well, it's not as important as the policy manual for me. The proposal in the working group is much more important, and and it has many more implications and stronger implications than the proposal that I presented with if it's uh, abandoned or discarded or if the author decided to withdraw it. Thank you, Tomas. Thank you, uh, all of you who participated in this open mic. So with this, we we'll put an end to the Public Policy Forum of LACNIC 42. We thank the authors, uh, staff of LACNIC, and those that participate both in the mailing list and here in the forum. We invite you to continue to participate in this uh, policy list. Uh, Carlos, you had some housekeeping announcement. Yes, this is outside, but this is the time for me to do it. Those of you who were yesterday at LACNOG, you may remember that among the last uh, uh, sessions, Benoit Clest was here to receive uh, the feedback of uh, small operators about your expectations on the network uh, um, uh, monitoring. Uh, Benoit will be there at the uh, booth of uh, LACNOG, and uh, he asked me to please let you know that he's there and available if you want to discuss things with him. Thank you all. See you again at LACNIC 43.